The lynx is an animal that is curious and above all uses its eyes. The two trapping techniques we're going to see make use of these two traits that characterize this species. In a young conifer forest near water, our trapper is checking one of his sets, moving towards the location we're interested in. Whether the system is a trap placed in a cubby set or snares, the basic principles are simple and invariable. A lure and some bait to attract the animal to the chosen site, and a system of guides or obstacles to direct it to the exact place where it's to be captured. Here's a fresh lynx toilet spot on an old logging road. Our trapper is relieved. His old lynx set can still be used. To set the three snares, the trapper needs a fairly large spruce tree that will protect the snares from the elements. The goal of the plan is simple, to attract the lynx and make it walk around the tree. A dry wood pole is placed about three and a half feet above the ground. This is so that when the lynx is up on its hind legs to get at the bait, it doesn't come down on the snares and spring them. He makes sure the pole is securely fastened. The bait is hung from the spruce tree, about four or five feet up. The bait will also be eaten by birds and small mammals. To complete the set, the trapper cuts a notch for the lure in the trunk of the spruce tree, on the opposite side that the bait is on. The trick should make the lynx circle the tree with little chance of avoiding the snares. Gloves are only used for the bait. Thank <laughs> you. 
plink snares are made with 1 16th of an inch airplane cable, which is a medium strength cable. An Adams snare lock or any other humane lock is recommended. The trapper sets his snares as close to the tree as possible and attaches them to the spruce trunk. The snare opening can be between 8 and 10 inches and should be positioned 8 inches above the ground. There's an important precaution to take. Don't forget to slightly bend the upper part of the snare at the height of the lock so that the lock doesn't drop down. He places a small stick under the snare to make the animal lift its head towards the middle of the snare. To avoid having birds accidentally close the snare, the trapper puts a small evergreen branch above it. A second snare is set on the other side of the spruce tree in exactly the same way. Both sides of the snares are blocked with branches so that only the snare openings are visible. The third snare is set a few feet away because some links may circle the set without coming very close to it. To finish, the trapper hangs a visible lure from a branch over the path leading to the three snares. The visible lure will flap around in the wind and catch the lynx's attention. The animal's curiosity will look after the rest. This is a traditional lynx cubby that is used by trappers all across Canada. I'm going to demonstrate how to use a belial foot snare in this type of a cubby. First of all, I have a quarter of a beaver which I'm going to hang towards the back of the cubby to bait it. Okay, for the pur purposes of the demonstration, to show the placement of the belial foot snare, I'm going to move my stepping log or drag log out of the way for a few minutes. Now, one thing that we have found using the belial foot snare that is very important is that the trap be placed in a level position in the entrance to the cubby. This can be done in one of two ways. The springs can be depressed into the ground or a small stick can be placed under the ends of the springs to level it. But this is quite important. The placement of the trap is also important in that the lynx should step into the trap from the side, not from the back or the front of the trap. I'm going to move the frame out of the way for a minute. Now that I've showed you how to place it, put my drag log back and show you two methods of attaching the snare. First of all, I've attached a strong wire behind the stop on the snare.
Now this wire is used to either secure the snare to a root with a staple like so or if you prefer a drag log if you prefer to use a drag log you can use this wire to attach the snare to the drag log in this case I'm going to attach the wire firmly to the root of the tree with a staple. Now again, we move the frame into position. Uh, I'll, to make things clearer, I'll move the drag log out of the way again. The snare goes over the trap between the front jaws, under the back jaw, under the safety, we bring the dog up under the pan. Okay, the trap is now set in position and the only thing that we need to do is make the lynx put its foot into that trap. We can do that in a number of ways with guide sticks and a stepping log. The trapper has two choices. He can put the snare through the little loop stop if he wishes to have the trap attached to the snare or he can attach the frame to a tree or branch with a piece of twine. If you do this, the frame of the trap will be away from the animal and beside the cubby, the snare will be on the animal's foot or attached to the drag log or on the drag log, depending on on whether it's wired solid or wired to the drag. The last thing we do before we leave is take off the safety and again double check that the trap is in a level position so that when the link steps into it he's stepping square on the pan. With this kind of setup, Lynx has virtually no choice but to place his foot centrally on the trap as he goes into the cubby. Okay, where a trapper may have problems catching Fisher or Martin by using bait for Lynx, the duck wing set is specific only to Lynx, is very simple to construct, construct and very effective. Simply trim a few branches from a spruce tree, hang a duck wing on a piece of fishing line from the spruce branch, dip the end of the duck wing into lynx lure and suspend it so that it can swing freely. Underneath the duck wing, a little bit in front of it, set your belial foot snare 
with just a few guide sticks. This is very effective and will only catch lynx. As trappers bear a certain responsibility towards the animals that they trap, today they have the choice of several methods enabling them to capture animals very efficiently. They must use trapping techniques and sets that are as humane as possible. By respecting the fur bear resource and the environment, and by practicing good trap line management, trappers help maintain the balance and the continuity of this resource, ensuring that it will be the heritage of future generations.